Hello all of you online. I'm also doing this live. So I need one second before I can actually officially start the show. Greetings unsettled souls and a welcome to the correct views. Sam Ivey reporting for The Media Speaks. Do me a favor, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and check out all of the wonderful things going on there. I just co-authored a story with uh, Anthony Court, and uh, that has been something that you absolutely have to read. It's on Bilderberg. This is from Yahoo.com. Uh, you guys like the Fukushima update, did you? Good. You clicked on it. You want Fukushima news? I'll give you Fukushima news. More radioactive leaks are reported at Fukushima plant. Now, this is a surprise to nobody whatsoever that has an IQ over that of an average clam. Tokyo, the operator of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant on Wednesday admitted that it had found another leak of radioactive water, the latest episode in a growing catalog of mishaps. This is now in danger, if it hasn't already, of becoming a melt-through. A melt-through is what you have when the, this is the water table here, this is land. When radioactive material sinks into the water table, then it mixes with the water, and all of the natural water then becomes poison. Of course, you all know what rain and osmosis do, right? Now that you know how important it is, listen. Water was leaking at a rate of one drop every three or four seconds. And by the way, for those of you that don't know, one or two drops, depending on the radioactive element, is enough to kill your child 25 years after it drinks it. That's fact. You don't believe me? Facebook.com, go look up Chris Busby and ask him. Adding that absorbent material had been placed under the leak and workers were trying to stem the flow. Oh great, well, maybe they should just burn the, uh, the cloth or whatever it is it's falling upon, right? No, that'll send it into the air and into someone's lungs. You cannot get rid of radioactivity that way. An increasing volume of water made radioactive after being used to cool the melted cores of broken reactors from the tsunami that people predicted was going to happen and asked them to shut it down before it happened has become a growing headache to TEPCO which has hundreds of tanks on the site. Critics have improvised fixes put in place in Fukushima, it says, since the disaster, leave it vulnerable to mishaps and at mercy of nature. Underwater storage pools have previously sprung leaks and a rat knocked out a rat, yes, a rat, knocked out electricity supplies to cooling systems after it found its way onto a circuit board earlier this year. So we have radioactivity as poisonous as I just laid out to you. And it can be, it, it's uh, containment can be felled and bested by a rat or safe. On Monday, TEPCO announced it had detected radioactive cesium in groundwater, my earlier hand motion little analogy. Groundwater samples taken from the site, reversing an earlier announcement that the water was harmless. The company had been intending to release the groundwater into the sea, but suspended the plan in the face of the strong protest of local fishermen. I got news for you, local fishermen. And first and foremost, you did the right thing. However, there is no way that any sane person would ever eat anything that comes from Japan ever again. Some of this stuff does not go away from being a toxin. I know it's called a half-life. I'm trying to appeal to people that don't know. This doesn't ever go away. Ever. I'm just going to say ever. There are billions of years involved before you could ever be around this stuff, even close to safety. 
And uh, so therefore I'm not going to get into the scientific side which bores all of you to tears. Please just listen. Don't ever eat anything out of Japan. And hey, look at my last video. Go to my last video. Um, because it talks about how the plankton absorb this into the environment and it's concentrated on much higher forms by the time we eat this, uh, this seafood. However, I do understand why the fishermen did not okay to this because their water is toxic. Uh, an earlier article that I didn't get to, you can look it up, it's NHK, um, it talks about this openly, about how um, this, this, is for, this is for the long haul people. This is how it gets into the food chain. I'm not going to go over it again, but check out my last video. I did it in depth. I proved it beyond a shadow of doubt. Although the natural disaster, it says, that sparked the meltdowns claimed to more than 1,800 lives, and no one is officially recorded as having died as a direct result of the nuclear catastrophe. That's because it is now in the thyroids of their children. Look up children thyroid Japan before you leave a comment on my comment line that says that it isn't true. Because it's true! Alright, uh, this is japantimes.co.jp. This is good news. Nuclear foes forge ma march on diet. Uh, the diet is the leadership of Japan, for those of you that may not know. An anti-nuclear power rally a Sunday near the Diet Building that drew 60,000 people, according to three groups that organized the event, including one led by Nobel Literature Laureate Ken Zaburo O. Uh, that's O-E. Um, of course, uh, the, uh, the police department said 20 or 30,000 people came. I'm going to go ahead and trust the Nobel uh, liter Literature Laureate there, Mr. O, uh, or o -san. I don't know how you say it. You know what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and trust him first. Uh, I, and I was at Bilderberg in 2012. Uh, look up Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to Me. And uh, that's my movie that you can see for free. And it's, I know how many people were there. And I know how underreported it was by the media. So the point is there were probably pretty close to 60,000 people here. The protesters marched on the diet after staging rallies in a park and a site near the diet building earlier in the day. Resuming operating nuclear power plants is a betrayal to Fukushima, Fukushima O oh said at the rally in Shiba Park in Minato Ward. He also said that public opinion is strongly in favor of scrapping all of Japan's nuclear power plants, which is the best news I've ever heard. For those of you that don't know, take all the toxins I talked about at the beginning of the show and think about what a wonderful idea it is to go ahead and allow those toxins to be in jeopardy of being released in the atmosphere anytime an earthquake might happen in a place like Japan, where earthquakes created Japan. The protest was organized by the Metropolitan Coalition Against Nukes, remember them, they're heroes, which has been holding weekly rallies outside the Prime Minister's office since at the start of the Fukushima crisis in 11, and a group of labor unions nationwide. Last paragraph. Also taking part in a group led by O and other celebrities, uh, it must be there, I have no idea who they are, that has organized an ongoing anti-nuclear campaign dubbed uh, 10 Million People's Action to Say Goodbye to Nuclear Power Plants, and that is the best news I've heard all day. Alright guys, that is your Fukushima update. All my Fukushima people, do me a favor. Subscribe to me and hit share. The last time I did a Fukushima report, I got like a wave of hits. You know what? I love all of you guys. I've been on this since day one. Uh, help me grow. Do me a favor. Subscribe to me and hit share. Um, Nitro-Pack Preparedness Center, Inc. Go to uh, TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on the Nitro Pack. Why? Because you're going to find out they have the most amazing deals ever. I'm going to talk about some of the things that they have that I haven't mentioned before. Um, a 52 servings quick and easy breakfast bucket. 52 full serving, very good to eat breakfasts. $158.95. Normally $173. Guys, uh, for those of you, I don't buy all that stuff. I'm just a weekend camper. Fine. 
Mountain House Just In Case Bucket Classic Assortment, 75 bucks. Normally 88. Who wouldn't want that? Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Nitro Half and Pack. Hyphen Pack. Uh, it's, it's, it's the link on the Media Speaks. Go to Media Speaks, hit Nitro Pack, and look at this stuff. They got tents, they got food, they got prep needs, they got generators. Go to this site. Forbes.com. Uh, this is an older story, 425 2013. But you know what? This just stuck with me for two reasons. First of all, your boss has no business knowing anything about you that does not occur in the job that you are currently working in. End of story. No questions asked. Welcome to America, jerks. Second of all, any idiot that would realistically give their boss or anyone else the passwords to their real social sites are so stupid that I have no earthly idea how you ever got interviewed for a job that paid that much. So before I get into this story, which is an assault on our liberties, no surprise there, I'm going to go ahead and tell you exactly how to get around this kind of BS before we even get into it. If I was going to apply for such a job, that would be a little hard for me to do with this show. But let's pretend I'm Joe Normal. I'm, I'm Mr. Sam Normal. Wow, is that a stretch. Okay. I like Nicki Minaj and I have no brain in my head. Alright. I'm Joe, Joe Normal, and um, I'm getting interviewed for a $50,000 a year job. If the employer asks for your Facebook and your account, now that you've listened to this, go and open up Mr. Joe Normal at Facebook.com. Mr. Joe Normal likes to go fishing on his days off. He and his girlfriend are sometimes seen at the opera. And they genuinely enjoy staying home watching Seinfeld reruns. And all of that is a total lie! That is what you give your boss if you're stupid enough to capitulate to this, which I would suggest just not even applying. Of course, your real Facebook is Joe anything but normal. He smokes weed, gets blasted on the weekend, and him and his girlfriend like to go to raves and have orgies. In other words, never use your primary Facebook or whatever you use. Don't use that as your primary use if you think that you might be one of the people dumb enough to actually give it to your boss, which I would say no to. <sighs> Having said that, Forbes.com, Big Brother has a new face, and it's your boss. Recently, the CVS Caremark Corporation began requiring employees to disclose personal health information. Well, maybe you should get theirs. Including weight, blood pressure, and body fat levels. Or else pay an annual fine of $600. Workers must make this information available to the company's employee wellness program and sign a form stating that they're doing so voluntarily. Alright. So maybe I should say, hey, you're going to give me $600, or I'm going to bust the window out of your living room while you're at work. And you're going to sign a letter that said I did it voluntarily. You like that? Well, that's what I just read you. Paraphrased! CBS argues that this will keep workers, make workers take more responsibility for improving their health. Infringement. At one level, this makes a certain sense because the company is paying for their employees' health insurance. They naturally prefer healthier workers. But at a deeper level, CVS's action that demonstrates a growing problem with our current system of employer-provided health insurance. If our bosses must pay for our health care, they will inevitably seek greater controls over our lifestyles. You know, it makes a lot of sense, especially with Obamacare coming in. So, I mean... And this is going to be a problem. 
Um, it mentions in here that Colorado is trying to attract um, obese people and all of this. And this is an idea here, though, and I like this. Instead of reinforcing the current system linking health insurance to employment, we should uncouple the two. We should equalize the tax status of employer-provided health insurance with insurance purchased by individuals outside of work. This is the key element of many free market health reforms. This would also help create a robust market for truly portable insurance that stayed with the consumer when he changed jobs just as one's auto or homeowner's insurance is perfectly unaffected by job changes. In other words, you would be responsible for your own insurance and the money would be taken off of your taxes. And many people, including myself, think it would be better if the IRS were not even in existence. And if you want to know why, then here you go from Washington's blog. IRS to spy on shopping records, travel, and social interactions. We noted in March, Washington's blog says, that all U.S. intelligence agencies, including CIA and NASA, are going to spy on American finances. The IRS is joining the fun. U.S. News and World Report notes today, this was the 2nd of May 03, uh, 13, excuse me, the IRS will use in-robo audits and data mining, and it has told government and industry groups that its computers are capable of scanning multiple networks at the same time to collect matching comprehensive profiles of every taxpayer in America. Such profiles will likely include shopping records, travel, social interactions, and information not available to the public, such as health records and files from other governments or that government investigators, according to IRS documents. I'm going to keep reading this, and I'm going to give you the correct views. The IRS is following the philosophy of former Obama Secretary Czar Cass Sunstein, or remember him? No, no one does, who advocates using technology tools and behavioral science policies to nudge People to do the right thing. In the case of the IRS, that policy so far has fallen most heavily on lower income taxpayers and has done little to collect substantially more tax revenue. But what it's doing is it wants to say, hey, you said that you made X amount of dollars, but based on what you bought and where you went, you spent XX amount of dollars and now we can audit you. And this is ridiculous for a number of reasons. For one thing, I run this show. I do my own taxes. And this hasn't happened yet. But if somebody gave me a computer system that is worth a lot of money, but it was given to me freely, all it takes is for them to decide some strange audit procedure and suddenly I'm a criminal and can face prison and wage attachments and everything else. The solution to this is to abolish the IRS. And for those of you that think that that can't be done, look up what a flat tax is for one thing. I'm not saying that that is the be all end all, but I am saying that that is uh, one option that uh, many people are in favor of. And you know, I, I can see it is certainly better than what we have now. Uh, last two things I want to get to. A lot of you people like uh, to see uh, the more scientific weird stuff at the end of the show, so I got two for you in closing. Um, NASA says setting foot on Mars is human destiny. This is France24.com. Setting foot on Mars by the 2030s is human destiny and a U.S. priority, and every dollar available must be spent on bringing, uh, bridging gaps in knowledge on how to get there, NASA's chief said on Monday. Addressing a conference of space experts at George Washington University, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden said that despite hard economic times, that the United States is committed to breaking new boundaries in space exploration. Obama, in my opinion, has been a detriment, a harm, a doom to the American Space Administration, and they are a disgrace. Let's stop the shuttle flights before we have anything to replace them with. He is just the worst president of all time. A human mission to Mars is today the ultimate destination in our solar system for humanity, and it is a priority for NASA. Well, too bad it's not for Obama. 
Our entire exploration program is aligned to support this girl, Bolden said. Too brave, uh, too cowardly to attack Obama. President Barack Obama has proposed a $17.7 billion budget for NASA in 2014, after being a thorn in our side since he started, and he supports a vibrant and coordinated strategy to Mars exploration, Bolton said. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Because now it sounds good and he can have it in his legacy because he's already going to be mostly gone by then. Among the first steps to sending astronauts to Mars are NASA's plans to capture and relocate an asteroid by 2025, a process that should inform future efforts to send humans into deep space, the former astronaut said. It goes on to say that medical experts are unsure what the physical ramifications would be for people who attempt to travel in high radiation environments for extended periods of time. And that is a, a, very, a very important thing to mention here. Uh, the amount of radiation that you get in once you leave past a certain area of the Earth's protection is substantial. It's worse than Fukushima in some regards. So, you may need to you know, weigh your cards here. But, I mean, there are things they can do if they would quit cutting costs so much that would allow these things to be shielded in uh, lead. Not the kind of, you know, in forest lead, so you're not breathing it in. But there are ways around this, and if NASA would look into it, and if all of mankind would look into these kinds of things instead of on how to blow each other up better, we'd probably already be the Mars. Um, the last thing I want to get to at NewScientist.com, mind-controlled exoskeleton lets paralyzed person walk. Um, before I get into this, I do want to say, people, I will be on next week. It is 6-6-2013, a.m. Uh, next Tuesday, I am going to be on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night live. I'm aiming for 4 to 6. Uh, glitches could be a tad late, but do me a favor. Go look up your uh, correct views on Facebook and follow the links on those days and you will see me. Alright guys, uh, two years ago Antonio Melillo uh, was in a car crash that completely severed his spinal cord. It's the kind of thing that you'd rather be dead than go through, you know what I'm saying? He has not been able to move or feel his legs since, and yet here I am, the author says, in a lab at the Santa Lucia Foundation Hospital in Rome, Italy, watching him walk. Italy, Italy, the, uh, the country that's not keeping up with enough people to be able to replenish itself. Italy in danger of going extinct, Italy. Uh, Melo is one of the first people with lower leg paralysis to try out Mind Walker, the world's first exoskeleton that aims to enable paralyzed and locked-in people to walk using only their mind. Locked-in people are people that can't even blink. Um, before I go on, let me say this is exactly the kind of thing we should be doing. Rather than trying to make robots find ways uh, to walk on all fours and attack us, uh, like ground drones, and for those of you that don't know, there's video of it, it's not like I'm making it up. Um, Maybe we should work on something like this. Maybe this should have already come to pass if we would, again, quit trying to find more interesting ways to blow each other up. Five people have been involved in a clinical trial of a mind walker over the past eight weeks. The trial culminates this week with a review by European Commission, which featured the work. The project has been carried out by a consortium of several major universities and companies. Basically, they had some trouble. Uh, there's a way to run this using your arms, another way to run this using your eyes and reading your brain waves. Um, and they've gotten both to work. They had some glitches, but to make this whole thing short, they got it to work. So go and look this up, because if it's helping people that are locked in, uh, people that can't even blink, and then you know what? You got the eugenics crowd out there saying that we're better off just killing people that can never give anything to society rather than let them live. And then you've got people with a little more compassion and a little more intelligence than your average Nazi. And they're realizing that there are ways to make these people better, to make them walk, to make them run, to make them productive, uh, to use the term that they disgracefully use. So the answer is not eugenics. The answer is technological progress the kind that helps our health, and not like Monsanto, hurting it. You are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so, friends. Please donate if you can. 
leave a comment on my comment line and I will let you know exactly how you can donate to me. All money that you give me goes into a better show. I am also raising money for Dana Mobley Christ as she runs the charity connection. She herself now has lung cancer, so someone who has helped many people now needs our help and we need to get on it. Good night, friends. God bless. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Do me one more favor. Hit subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit Remix right now. It's right under the video. Hit Remix. It'll post it on your channel. Last but not least, if you're on Facebook, hit Share. And if you're on Twitter, retweet the hell out of this. Thank you, friends. Good night and God bless.